Good morning folks, I hope you're well and welcome to this video on the game of life. So we're going to find out what that is. The game of life was invented in 1970 by John Conway who is a really really famous mathematician from Cambridge. Um, he also invented other mathematic mathematical concepts such as Conway algebra um, and a bunch of other stuff as well, which I will allow you to go and look up about if you're interested in it. Um, the Game of Life was created by him in 1970, and in his later years, he wasn't, he didn't come across as particularly proud of it. Uh, I think because it became a sort of millstone around his neck. Whenever he was interviewed, people wanted to talk about the Game of Life, and I think he probably considered other aspects of his career and his and his maths more more useful more interesting more important however there's something about the game of life that captured people's imagination and got lots of people playing it it was featured in magazines uh and it became a bit of a craze at the time so it is really cool and it is really interesting and that's why we're looking at it it's a zero player game that's what mr conway used to say it's a game that you set up hit the start button and off it goes and you see what happens. A bit like with dominoes when you set up a stack of dominoes in a line and you make them go in all directions and then you start that falling over, you knock over the first domino and see what happens next. It's a bit like that. So the game of life is played on an infinite grid of square cells so it can go infinitely in any direction. Obviously we can only simulate a certain amount of that on the screen. Each cell can be populated or not. It can be alive or dead. It can be on or off. It could be a one or a zero if you're a computer scientist. Uh, in our representation of the game of life, we're going to use yellow for alive and grey for dead or off. So you create your cells, you hit start and off it goes. You can play it on paper, by the way, if you haven't got a computer available to do this on. Uh, I have seen John Conway do it with coins where he's drawn a grid and put coins on it or I've seen him even do it with peanuts where he eats the peanuts when they are no longer in the game. You could do that with Skittles or M&Ms or any sweets you want really. Could be quite fun. So in our game of life we've got four rules. First rule, a cell that has one or less neighbours dies. It's isolated, it's lonely, so it dies. So if one of those squares has one yellow pixel in it on its own, unsurrounded, it will disappear. A cell that has four or more neighbours dies, so it's overcrowded. So if one of those cells has four or more pixels around it that are also yellow, it will die off. It will disappear. Uh, if it has two or three neighbours around it, it survives. And if it has two or three neighbours around it and it's not alive yet it is born it appears so cells can appear cells can disappear based on these four rules the easiest way to understand these rules is to actually have a little play with this so just to remind you the website is called playgameoflife.com you can load that up on your computer and have a play with that in a minute do the worksheet that i'm going to supply here is the website with the game of life on it uh hopefully coming up on my screen yes it is good so what I'm going to do first of all, I'm going to show you one pixel. So there's a pixel. We draw our pixels on the screen. We hit the next button or the start button. The start button will keep it running turn by turn by turn. The next button will just do the next turn. So if I click the next button here, you see that my pixel, because it didn't have enough neighbours, because it was lonely and isolated, the cell died. Very sad. If I put two cells there, the same thing will happen. They've only got one neighbour each, so they will both conk out as well. If we put three in, something interesting will happen. It, this cell here is born. The third, fourth cell is born. And if I click next again, we've got four cells now. So they've all got three neighbours. And I can click next forever and ever and ever and ever. And you see it will not change. Same here. Let's do that again, click next, and so on. You get the idea. Okay, now, it gets more interesting than that after four cells when you start using different patterns. So, for example, 
if I put 3 here, we know that that one there is going to die. However, this one is going to be born at the same time. So in each turn, this one's going to die, this one's going to be born. After that, we're going to have a different pattern. And you can start to predict what's going to happen, but let's hit the start button. Actually, let's do next, let's do it step by step. So the next step, these four were born around the edges and the one in the middle died. If I do next again, we've got a different configuration now. There's going to be a cell born here in the middle again. In fact, there wasn't, was there? But following the four rules, you can start to see that over time, this evolves. And one of the concepts that was so interesting about this was that it represented, it simulated life and cells reproducing based on rules. So you can try different shapes out here and see what happens. For example, if I just bung in some shapes and when you start bunging in the shapes in different places, in different ways, let's just put in some random stuff, put in whatever you want. They're going to not only interact with themselves, they're going to interact with each other. And let's hit start and see what happens. Rrr. And you can see why this was considered a way of sort of simulating life. Everything's died off over here. These have gone into a locked state because there's four cells here, four cells here. So these aren't going to change anymore. Even though the turns are still going up, I can stop it because that's not going to do anymore. There are some very interesting patterns that have been worked out by mathematicians. So a simple one is called the glider. Now, I watched a video and John Conway said he wished he'd call it something cooler than the glider because it isn't really a glider. It kind of crawls across the screen. So based on the four rules, it replicates itself in a way where it dies off at the back. It's born at the front and it looks like it's crawling across the screen. So I don't know what we should have called that. Maybe the ant the caterpillar. Who knows? But anyway, that's a glider. And if I zoom out, you can see that's just going to go on forever and ever and ever. Now, a really cool pattern, which is a lot more complicated, is the Gosper, which is named after a mathematician called Gosper. Another one to look up. Glider gun. And I'm going to zoom out on that. Now, what we've got here, when I run it, you can see it's doing a bunch of stuff, it's replicating, it's, it's evolving, but then it gets to a point where it starts reproducing. It starts firing off these little gliders like we had earlier across the screen. And it'll do that forever and ever. So it's creating copies of this glider and sending it off. And mathematicians and scientists both found that really interesting because this is a machine creating instances or copies of itself. So if this is a simulation of life, these little gliders are being born and sent across the screen. And I'm not going to give too much away on that, but if you do these tasks here first, you've got the task on the worksheet. I want you to come up with ways of or patterns that it seem to evolve on their own. So they keep going and they keep changing. And then you might want to look at this. That last thing I showed you, the Gosper glider gun, is really significant when it comes to something to do with space travel and colonizing other planets. And it fits in with this, this thing here, the von Neumann machine. And you want to look into von Neumann, who he was, what he came up with, and what this von Neumann machine is. Because, all right, I'm a bit of a nerd. But in science fiction, von Neumann's machine comes up quite often. It's to do with how you could use machines and computers to colonize other planets for humans. Uh, and the game of life is a very, very simple version which inspired that. So they all tie together. If you're into space and SpaceX and uh, Elon Musk and, and all the stuff that's going on with Mars, this is really interesting stuff, guys. Okay. So I'm going to leave it there. Have a play with the game of life. 
Um, see what you can come up with on that. Have a look at this other stuff as well and enjoy. I'll see you soon.